So hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying Zero World. My name is Sandra Wolf and I've been you know, volunteering for the Scala community for the past six years. Started with Scala Portugal Meetup, then create the first Scala, created the first Scala conference in Portugal. I'm also the co-organizer co of Functional Scala Conference in London, as well as multiple Zio meetups uh, around the world. Uh, Today, we're hosting this panel with some of the leading minds in the Scala community, uh, CTOs, engineering managers, decision makers, so that you can have a better insight into why successful companies are choosing Zio for their projects. Um, so I'm go going to ask our panelists to say a few words about themselves and about their company. Let's, let's begin. Hey, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Yoni, uh, the CTO and co-founder of uh, CoraLogix. Just a quick few words about uh, CoraLogix. Um, we are a real-time monitoring and observability uh, platform. We believe that uh, most data uh, shouldn't be, uh, it, right now most data is not queried and because of that shouldn't be indexed. So our approach is to analyzing data with stateful distributed streams. And uh, this is what also brought us uh, uh, to Zio. I'm excited to be here in Zio world and uh, looking forward to share uh, the way that uh, Zio improved our uh, R&D cult culture and uh, the way we think on uh, development. Great to have you here, Yanni. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Yuval. I'm a senior software engineer at Cyber Hunters. Uh, Cyber Hunters is a, a cybersecurity company focused on detection and response. And we basically sit on top of your existing uh, cyber applications and provide you with smart cross correlations between these applications and provide you a platform to write your own smart detections on top of that. Super excited to be here. I've uh, been using Zio uh, for quite a while now and uh, happily uh, to get other people on board. Good to have you here, Yuval. Hi, uh, I'm Elliot. I was one of the early engineers at a company called Affirm and uh, then uh, started a company called Haven Money, um, which was the first US-based savings and investing app. Um, and we were acquired by Credit Karma in December of 2019, where I now um, lead a, the anti-fraud efforts and uh, some of my company's tech. Thank you so much for being here, Elliot. Hi, I'm, I'm Jakub Trunowski. I'm, I'm a CTO of Scalac. We are a software house uh, focused on developing applications in Scala and providing trainings in Scala. Recently, we've joined uh, in partnership with Zyverge, and I think that I believe that uh, shows our dedication to open source in general and in, for Zio in particular. Thank you, Jakub. Great to have you here as well. And that leaves us with Zuka. Hi, everyone. My name is Zuka. I'm uh, one of the founders and the CTO of Fugo AI. Fugo helps businesses to turn any screen into smart digital signage. It's an easy to use software that manages small to large screen networks. It um, integrates with popular business apps and uh, measures audience engagement. We've been using Zio since its early days. Um, we've been looking for a scalable uh, and reactive functional programming solution that was, and Zio was perfect for us. And that's how we came to using it. Awesome, good to have you here as well. All right, so you all chose Zio for your projects. I would like to understand what other technologies did you consider when evaluating Zio, and what really made Zio stand out? Um, I'd be happy to answer that. I think that um, for us being a very young startup, we were looking for a solution that would essentially help us develop our business as fast as possible. And knowing that we were going to be in the data focused market, uh, we understood that we're probably going to be working with one of the big data systems and going to be writing code in Scala. 
And being functional developers, we looked at the existing uh, effect systems and evaluated them. And I think for sure, Zio stands out uh, for its batteries included approach, for the ecosystem, both for contributing and the various libraries that are forming around it. And once you start prototyping with it and you see how fast development can get, uh, that was an immediate buy-in for us. And yeah, we're definitely not sorry for making that decision. Awesome, good to hear. Um, Elliot, how about you? I'm interested to hear your take on this. Yeah, um, so we started working in, in Scala kind of before Zio was, was around. And um, it, it's kind of a mess to sometimes to, to deal with the other effect systems and the, um, the ecosystems around them. Um, there's, you, you don't always get stack traces, um, which can be really frustrating, especially when you're bringing on engineers who've maybe worked in languages with a simpler execution model. And um, you know, Zio really changed the game when it came out. Um, it was uh, easy for, for people to pick up and understand. Um, certainly a lot easier than like tagless finals uh, types of constructions, but it gave you the same functional expressive power or, and even, even more so than something like cats. Um, so we've been incredibly happy uh, with Zio and with the ecosystem that's spun up around it. And we've actually brought Zio to Credit Karma and people are really excited about using it there now too. Awesome, so good to hear. And Yoni, interested to hear your take as well. Um, so uh, we um, um, created our first uh, uh, Scala streaming application like two and a half years ago. And at uh, the beginning we chose, uh, we started with uh, Monix um, and uh, uh, in the end we ended up with, uh, uh, with Zio and there were uh, a few reasons for that. One of it was the high performance that we got from Zio uh, that was better. The built-in uh, declarative and expressive uh, concurrency and parallelism um, the streaming nature of Zio, the rock solid error handling uh, in compile time, the, and, and of course the amazing community that uh, uh, Zio has. Uh, these are just some of the reasons why we, we chose Zio and we're, we're still happy about that choice. Perfect, so good to hear that. Uh, does anyone else want to jump in? Um, I can quickly add that uh, actually we were using sure. Akka, um, um, actor model pre prior to Zio. Uh, and we found it really hard uh, iterating our, our system uh, with this approach. And um, we wanted something more functional and uh, statically typed ev uh, even on like the error side of the uh, flow. And that's how we kind of bumped into Zio initially. Perfect, thank you for the, that answer. Jakub, yeah, I saw you want to join as well. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think traditionally is what uh, what Elliot and Zuka were saying. Traditionally, we were choosing between futures with maybe Arca and and Cass Effect, and but over futures, uh, Zio gives us everything that John already told us, and uh, with Cass Effect, just to try to close the gap of features. Uh, we would need to uh, build on top of Clisely and, and Ethert. And in the end, um, Zio is actually has better type inference and, uh, and better general usability. So the choice seems to be clear. Perfect, good to hear that. So some of you have been using Zio in production and Tell me what is some of the real life feedback on building and deploying these applications using Zio? Um, I guess I can jump in. Oh, okay, sure, Zuka, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think one thing that is not talked about enough is um, uh, how easy does Zio make um, programmers to write business logic? Um, and um, We've been running uh, Zio in production for, I think, four or five months now. And uh, most of the errors and exceptions that we've seen so far, especially from business logic, it actually comes outside of our uh, Zio, um, uh, Zio system. But it's, it was quite interesting for me to see that because most of the complex business logic is actually written in Zio. So I was actually thinking about why is that the case? What, what's, what is it with Zio that doesn't 
uh, what features does your have that allows you to do that compared to other programming languages or frameworks? And um, I think the main uh, feature was that it allows you to kind of uh, split up um, what you want to build and how you want to build it. Um, and if you're, especially if you're building a reactive scalable system, um, how you how question is complex enough and if you mix that with the business complexity the the overall complexity explodes um, so i think writing business logic in zeo for programmers is much much easier but even better it is when you actually compose um different kind of you know business logics from various programmers within the team and that's when you kind of see the magic um, Happen. Thank you so much. Uh, Yoni, um, how about you? What is your experience? Um, so um, uh, the way Zio is helping us uh, in production is basically, as, as I mentioned, uh, the high performance that we get mm -hmm. from it. Um, because uh, in our case, we need to process millions of records every, every second in our data pipeline. And Zio uh, has a very big part in it. Um, also, we really like Zio async uh, stack trace which help us a lot of time to debug production issues much faster and significantly uh, reduce the time it takes us to, to fix them. Um, also, again, catching a lot of the issues already in development and, uh, and then making our uh, uh, production more stable. And of course, uh, the Z layer that uh, uh, is boosting the way we are creating a testable code. Awesome, perfect, thank you so much. Anyone else wants to share their real life experience? Yeah, I think I think a lot of what John is is talking about, uh, and and sometimes it can sound a bit commercial from from you know from someone new into the business. It really truly translates in, into into real life work. Uh, I think others said ASIC, uh, ASIC async stack traces, and these are like real key uh, a real key feature when you're working with highly concurrent code, which is fairly easy to, to get to with Zio, It's really a lifesaver when things go wrong uh, and it can help you easily trace what's going bad in production. Uh, and that's not something that you get out of, the, out of the box anywhere else. And I think it's a, it's a key differentiator. Perfect, thank you Val for this input. Elliot, do you want to share also your experience? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's really, for me, it's just, it's so expressive. Um, I think, you know, John showed a, a couple of these examples where, you know, there was like a, a scraping a bunch of URLs, but it, it's really like that easy in, in your normal code to be like, oh, and like, here's how I'm going to retry this policy or, um, you know, here's how I'm going to, um, you know, fetch a dependency graph or something. And, and these concepts like, translate in the same way you'd like to write pseudocode, but like directly into Zio. Um, and for me, it was all, you know, if you're running a small startup, you've got a, a team of really skilled folks and you want to just move as quickly as possible. Like Zio just stays out of your way in the best ways. And it gives you just really expressive power um, to let you build systems that would otherwise be very difficult for a small team. Perfect. Thank you so much. So you all guys had this experience, you know, with Zio. And um, in terms of your next projects, are you still considering using Zio, or maybe you want to build them on top of a different technology? Where do you stand? So I mean, I, I can take that. I, I I love working with Zio, and like I uh, would absolutely never work on a project mm -hmm. without it. Um, I want everything in my code base to be Zio as much as possible. Um, I, th I think we ended up just writing like Zio wrappers around anything that, that wasn't Zio at the time, like trying to make our, our deep layer work with Zio um, and trying to make, you know, like cloud buckets work with Zio. And uh, it's something we're now we're I'm bringing to anyone I, I work with in Scala um, at Credit Karma. We've shifted their um, underlying RPC framework to be compatible with Zio. Um, we've hosted our services, um, which all of course run in Zio. And um, I just, I think it's a, it, it's an essential starting point for, for any new project for me. Thank you. Jakub, uh, what do you think about that? Well, as we just heard, it's probably very hard to go back from Zio to any, anything other than that. It's, there's really no, a comparable programmer's experience out there. Uh, 
I would probably uh, not choose Zio for a very, very small project, but then for a very small project, uh, I would stick, uh, I would stay away from, from any large library uh, and, and try to, uh, to just use Scala and JDK if that's possible. Uh, but other, otherwise, yeah, I would choose Zio. Thank you. Thank you so much for this input. So um, we have a lot of people today in the audience that are at the very early stages of adopting or evaluating Zio. And what are some of the practical tips that you can give them for adopting Zio? Yeah, I can, I can, I can uh, start uh, about that. So the, the, there is, of course, a learning curve uh, uh, to Zio. Um, so I would suggest starting with a uh, 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 one service and uh, making sure you have a champion or a tech lead uh, uh, to help other in the organization uh, and navigate uh, and uh, make the mind shift uh, that uh, is needed to, uh, to, uh, to working with you. Uh, one of the things that I can share that, uh, that uh, helped us is uh, sending uh, people uh, uh, like that to John sessions. And uh, also we were lucky to, uh, to work with Itamar uh, in our uh, project. And, I, uh, and if you're really serious about it, of course, you can become a partner uh, with uh, Zyverge and bring uh, the people from them uh, into your team to extend your team, which will make an amazing uh, big impact uh, on uh, uh, embracing uh, Zio. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for the great compliment. <laughs> uh, Yuval, how about you? So I think I would advise anyone getting into Zio, perhaps the first have uh, a basic understanding of functional programming, uh, things like immutability and higher order functions, which are used throughout uh, Zio and are basically all the, the rich combinators that it exposes, uh, use it. So get familiar with it, get comfortable with it, and it will ease uh, the way you jump in uh, to Zio. I also think that now, nowadays, uh, after Zio 1.0, uh, the ecosystem is booming. There are a lot of people writing great tutorials about how they're getting started with Zio and doing basic basic things with it. Uh, I certainly uh, used it uh, for starting projects like uh, getting uh, Zio-based HTTP for REST up. Uh, there's lots of uh, uh, great blog posts about it, so use it. I also think uh, the Discord is a great place to ask questions, so the, do that. Don't be afraid. The ecosystem is very friendly. Uh, and leverage all that to, to get everyone inside. Thank you. Anyone else wants to hop in? Yeah, uh, I, think I can just. Oh, okay. Yeah, go on. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think from a pro programmer's perspective, uh, I would advise to uh, get a get an understanding on, on basic. Uh, Zio building blocks like fibers, layers, and managed managed resources. Um, explore the API even by looking into into Zio code. It's it's really easy and well documented. And get an understanding of how Zio integrates with uh, with other libraries like uh, Cuts Effect and and Akka. And if, uh, if you still have doubts, you can uh, reach to Discord or call Scalac or, or Zyverge. Perfect, thank you for, for your input. Um, and question from a different perspective, from more of a business perspective, for companies out there thinking of adopting Zio, what are some of the challenges that they're going to face and how did you uh, overcome them? Um, I guess I can jump in. Sure. Uh, so as a, from a startup's point of view, our main challenge was finding Zio talent. Um, and um, we, the way we solved this was by um, uh, asking Scalac to help and get our team up to scratch with Zio. So it was like a really fast way of um, becoming really proficient with this technology and then uh, generating value uh, really, really quickly. So this was a lifesaver for us. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, that's my... Perfect, thank you so much. Um, Yoni, we'd love to hear your take on that as well. 
Um, so, so I can definitely uh, um, uh, agree about the fact that uh, um, uh, getting uh, uh, engineers that are uh, familiar with Zio uh, is a is a bit of a of a challenge. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, what we saw that when we are able to find people that either uh, know Zio or or excited about working on uh, with a framework uh, uh, like Zio, in the end we got uh, people that are uh, um, um, much more uh, fit to our other challenges like distributed programming and streaming architecture. And in the end, uh, the learning curve that they had uh, 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 to, to, to meet uh, the skills that we need there was shorter. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And the last question that I have to you is, you know, so at Zio World, we have a lot of core contributors present uh, today. And it's a good moment to talk about your wish list uh, towards Zio. So uh, what are you hoping to have in Zio? Yeah, I, I can jump because uh, I, I was sure. really excited to, to hear about uh, uh, John mentioning the uh, Zio flow. Um, but the, the, the thing that uh, we are most uh, uh, excited about and want to see in, a, uh, in Zio is uh, um, um, a, a way to do a, a better distributed programming uh, with Zio. We are early adapter of Kafka Streams and uh, uh, been using it uh, a lot in our data pipeline for stateful stream uh, processing uh, with the embedded RocksDB strategy. I would love to see uh, 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 Zio uh, um, um, being able to combine both uh, abilities of uh, stateful um, um, uh, streaming uh, capabilities with in-memory capabilities. Um, and, and again, do all that in the way that we are used to work with uh, uh, Zio expressive uh, nature. Uh, that for us will be a, uh, a big game changer. Perfect, thank you, noted. Um, Elliot, how about you? I've heard your list before, maybe you can share with us life. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I, th I think Zio really works best when the other pieces you're playing with are also Zio because uh, you, they just compose really nicely. So I'm, I'm really excited about some of the core parts of the stack transitioning to Zio-based projects um, like Zio Web and Zio SQL in particular, which I think are you know, core for most companies. Um, I'm really excited about uh, the Zio Magic project. Um, which I think makes layer construction far easier to to teach um, and to use and to reason about when errors crop up. Um, so, but in general, just just really excited about everything to to come and to find out today. Uh, kind of what else we can expect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Anyone else wants to hop in with the wish list? I guess uh, my wish list would be to have a seamless migration from. Uh, Scala 2 Zio to Scala 3 Zio. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. And, and uh, Z stream combinators. <laughs> Noted. Um, Yuval, how about you? What's on your wish list? No, I think uh, everyone has uh, basically said that for, for me, I think that the core thing is um, uh, Z layer construction and working with Z layers because. Um, when you embrace the Zio approach of, of modules uh, and, and separate them, <clears throat> separate your code into small blocks, it can quickly get uh, a little bit cumbersome to work and compose. So uh, as Elliot said, I think that the Zio Magic project uh, uh, getting traction is, 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 is awesome. And also, uh, as others said, the distributed computing, I think, uh, is the key next step for Zio. Uh, for as someone who worked with both Spark and Flink, I think there is major uh, room for improvement, especially given Zio's declarative nature and uh, uh, the way the combinators exist today. I think it, it's it's like it's something that's waiting to happen, uh, and I would love to see that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for participating in this panel. Thank you also for being the early adopters of Zio and for contributing to the success and the future of Functional Scala. Thank you for being here.